Hey everybody, this is Mr. Walker. Today's uh, topic is how to multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands. By the end of this video, um, you will be able to solve problems like the ones below. Let's just jump into it. 10 times 2, 20. 40 times 8, well, 4 times 8 is 32, and there's one zero, so it would be 320. 500 times 6, it's going to multiply 5 times 6 would be 30. I think I'm going to write that down here. That should left more space. So 5 times 6 is 30, and I'm going to count my zeros, 1, 2, and add them, 1, 2. 700 times 9, I'm going to multiply 7 times 9 would be 63, and count my zeros, 1, 2, 1, 2. 8,000 times 30, I'm going to multiply my 8 times 3 is 24, and I'm going to count my zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm going to write four zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to put in my separators, every three digits, for 240,000, and 7,000 times 500, 7 times 5 is 35. I'm going to count my zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. And I'm going to write my zeros, same amount, 5 zeros, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, we put in our commas every three digits. So 1, 2, 3. And so we get 3,500,000. Different ways that you can do this. I just like to use three steps for solving problems like this. Uh, the three steps are uh, multiply what I just refer to as the solid digits. For example, in the problem 300 times 4, well, zeros are not solid. Zero, in real life, zero is nothing. But if you have three donuts, that's something you can pick up. If you have four pencils, that's something that's solid that you can pick up. So that's my term. That's not really a math term. It's just my own term. So multiply your solid digits. So for example, 300 times 4. I'm going to start with 3 times 4. And we know that 3 times 4 is 12. Second step is count your zeros. I'm seeing 1, 2. So I counted them. And last is, of course, is to write. Well, if you count 2, then you write to. So, and so our answer would be 1,200 or 1,200. Uh, notice for this lesson, I'm not following the, the place value protocols as much because I'm just using another strategy. Just keep that in mind. All right. 8,000 times 2. Well, my solid digits are 8 and 2. 8 times 2 is 16. And then Step two is I count my zeros, one, two, three. And my last step is that I write one, two, three. And in this example here, 70 times 30, my solid digits would be seven times three is 21. Then step two is we count the zeros, one, two. And the third step is to write the zeros. In other words, two zeros. 2100. Now, you want to avoid, I'm not even going to draw my little, little frown face. Uh, this is a mistake you want to avoid. In problems like this that have fives, uh, we'll just watch. Our solid number is four times five. Four times five is 20. Now, notice that your answer for the solid numbers had a zero. So sometimes students will get confused and I think, well, there's two zeros and there's already one here and they just add one zero. Well, that would be the wrong answer.
And so make sure that you count to zero. So one, two, now I wrote one already, so I would have to add that second one. So be careful about that. Here's another example. Five are solid numbers. If 5,000 times 60 would be five, five, six is 30. Notice that you have a zero. You still have to count and write everybody your zero. So ready? One, two, three, four, ready? There's one there already, it doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, and put in your separator for your answer. So avoid the mistake that when you multiply, sometimes you have an answer that has a zero, you still have to count and write your zeros. Uh, to help understand uh, the reason why it works, just think of it in expanded form. Here's a really easy example, 20 times three. Well, if I write 20 in expanded form, it would be two tens. plus zero ones, but that is also multiplied by three. Well, zero times three would be zero. Three times zero in your ones place value would be zero, and three times two would be six. Well, when you add 60 plus zero, that would equal 60. So again, Two times three, you could say is going to be six, count your zero. And it's just a way of showing in another way why we can arrive at the answer that we do. Um, here's one similar, I'm just adding a digit. 200 times three, you could think of as the 200 times three plus the zero tens times three plus the zero ones times three. So starting with uh, the hundreds place, uh, the 200 would be three times zero is zero, three times zero is also zero, three times two is six. In the tens, you have zero tens. So zero tens times three would be zero, and in your ones, zero times three would be zero. Well, when you add these up, you would get 600, and again, when we use the method here that we're using today, two times three is six, and you count your zeros, one, two. So I'm just kind of showing why it works in that way. And finally, even this would continue in for all place values. Let's just do one more. 2,000 times three would simply be in expanded form, right? Uh, would be 2,000 times three plus zero hundreds times three plus zero tens times three, and finally zero ones. Well, we know these are all going to be zeros, right? And then three times zero, three times zero, three times zero, and three times two would be 6,000. When you add all of these up, I'm kind of running out of space today, but 6,000. And again, it's just showing that this method works. Two times three is six. Count your zeros. One, two, three. One, two, three. Another way I guess you could show why it works is repeated addition. Same problem we did on the other page. 2,000 times three. Well, I could say, well, for repeated addition, we would just simply say 2,000 plus another set of 2,000 plus a third set of 2,000. And when you add up your ones, you get zero. When you add up your tens, you get zero. When you add up your hundreds, and when you go two, four, six, notice that you get 6,000. If we just do it the way I'm showing you today, multiply your, what I call solid numbers, two times three, is six, count your zeros, one, two, three, and write your zeros, one, two, three, and you can see that we have the same answer. So again, the use of the repeated addition is just to show, uh, to justify that this is a correct way to do it. It's just a little bit of a shortcut that I like to do. Okay, let's just end uh, today's video with just a couple of examples. If you want to pause, you can to see how you're doing, but I'm just gonna kind of forge ahead. 400 times seven 
So 4 times 7 would be 28. Count your zeros, 1, 2, and write your zeros, 1, 2. Don't forget your comma. So 400 times 7 would be 2,800. 600 times 6. Take your solids. 6 times 6 is 36. Count your zeros, 1, 2, and write your zeros, 1, 2. So 600 times 6 would equal 3,600. Again, pause if you have to, if you just want to practice. Same principle. Take your solids, 3 times 4, 12. Count your zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. Write your zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't forget your, uh, your, your separator for commas. This would be our ones period and our thousands. So 3,000 times 40 would equal 120,000. 300 times 400. Your solid numbers are 3 times 4 would equal 12. Count your zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and write your zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we get uh, also interesting, 120,000. Five times two is 10. Now, can I just count one zero? Or do I count both? We count both, right? One, two, and write one, two. So five times 200 equals 1,000. 6,000 times 400. Let's do your solids. Six times four is 24. Count your zeros, a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then remember, every three, we're going to put in our comma. So 6,000 times 400 equals 2,400,000. And finally, 800 times 5. 8 times 5 is 40. Oh, so do we only need one zero? I'm tricking you, right? It uh, doesn't matter. You still have to count your zeros. One, two, and write. Whatever you count, you got to write. One, two. So that would be 4,000. And finally, 9,000 times 8. 9 times 8 is 72. Count your zeros. One, two, three, and write your zeros. One, two, three. So 9,000 times 8 equals 72,000. Okay, thanks, everybody, and we'll, we'll see you next time.